Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock and this is a Raid Shadow Legends video. We are back on the free to play. I am very excited. Uh, we're going to follow up on some of the clan boss stuff from yesterday's video, which is doing very well. So thank you guys for all the support there. Uh, we're also going to kind of take a look at just the account as a whole and see what all is going on. So first things first, let's take a look at the clan boss. So in Demon Lord clan boss, that team is not only 100%, at least so far it is also affinity friendly the biggest affinity that is a is a problem for a lot of teams is spirit affinity why is spirit affinity a problem well with spirit affinity what you tend to run into is the decreased speed debuff proves to be a problem what's great about this team and what is so great about anchorite is that he has a cleanse at the same time that he extends those buffs so when Anchorite goes off, he cleanses that speed, and we don't have to deal with it as much, which is great. So the whole kind of fear that I had about the affinity on this is kind of non-existent. So that's great news for us. Highly successful run. 229 million damage. That is uh, an insane amount of damage for one key. It vastly outdamages my free-to-play account. Uh, or sorry, my main account, I meant to say. This is my main account. However, they are completely different teams. And the main thing that matters to me about this team is that it does one key damage. That's what I'm looking for. That takes so much pressure off of a player when it comes to this game. I've been talking for a long time about Clan Boss. And you have seen the results of how important Clan Boss is. We have a steady collection of sacred shards we've got three right now we had several going into the last fusion uh as well as a steady amount of shards in general now i spend all of these pretty much every 2x opportunity so to have this much of a stockpile definitely shows you how important it is to get that constant income one thing i wanted to, to check on too real quick this is the wrong the wrong spot it would be the daily login rewards. Yeah, check it out. So I, I just, it occurred to me that we're over 270 days. So now we get this primal shard. Moving forward every day, as now eventually different legendaries go in here. But every day moving forward, we now get these primal shards. Uh, that's huge moving forward. Going to give us more opportunities to get our eventual mythical champion whenever that, that time comes. Okay, back to clan boss. So getting that one key takes pressure off of a player because I don't have to worry about using all my keys every day. I can log in. So previously, what I've been having to do, you get four keys a day across a 24-hour period, right? So if I, if I don't use both keys until noon... For whatever reason. Well, because they they are on a, uh, what is it, a, a, a six-hour cooldown. So if I use both keys at noon, six hours later I get another key, and then six hours after that another key. So 12 hours later total, I would get the two remaining keys I need. That's at midnight. Well, let's say I'm not going to stay up till midnight that night because I have something to do in the morning. Uh, that sucks. So I have to use them first thing in the morning, but I'm sure, you know, we're all human. We wake up and it's like, oh crap, I'm 10 minutes behind. I got to get ready. I got to go. I got to go. And then forget to log into the game, do eight hours of work. Don't get off until, you know, whatever time. And it's like, and then you use your two keys. Well, now your two keys aren't, aren't coming. Your other two keys won't return to you until, you know, three, four in the morning. That's not ideal, right? So there's other benefits to one key, of course. This is this is my personal benefit. The biggest one, too, is that you get quick battles, so you don't have to waste. You don't have to let the game run forever, right? Uh, but for me, what I had to do on this account in particular is wake up around, you know, wake up in the morning, and I had to immediately grab my phone and use both my keys so that I would get the other two keys later on in the day 
in order to do nightmare on a three key and or sorry ultra nightmare on a three key and nightmare on a one key now i have one key worst case scenario i use two keys at any point during the day maybe i don't get to put an extra key into brutal like i did or hard for those extra resources that's fine i'm not going to sweat that but missing out on ultra nightmare and nightmare resources is a problem also my previous team was only a four key or sorry was was a possible three key but sometimes a four key which meant no nightmare rewards that day and that stuff adds up over time that's fewer chances at legendary books that's fewer chances at sacred shards speaking of legendary books yeah no legendary books yet uh i gotta remember once I, i'll probably wait since the team works but i do want to book out that one last ability from uh from wixwell sorry that oh, i set my dog off tapping on the table teddy um one of my next plans for my setup, especially on my streams, I really want to do, I want to up, I have an upgrade for this camera. I have my wife's old camera and then I want this camera to be like a puppy cam to like put on, on him. And then I can, can put that on screen for you guys during my streams. But I, I gotta figure that out. <laughs> All right. Anyways, back to the video. So we talked about clan boss. I do want to address a couple of comments and, and things that I've seen, um, so full disclosure, I already recorded this video and I mentioned that there was a comment that really kind of threw me for a loop. Um, I want to go into that a little bit. I'm not going to go into detail now because they've since deleted that comment because I replied to it. It wasn't anything negative. They weren't mean or anything. It just confused me because the comment was like listing ways to beat Wixwell. And I was confused because I the video was all about how I beat Wixwell. I was like, this isn't really the like... Like, if I was struggling, sure, but I I beat him. I figured it out. And I'm telling you how I figured it out. So who who is this comment for? I was very confused. I feel bad that they deleted it. That wasn't my intention. I simply was trying to get like like did you watch like did you watch the video or like did, did like I, I I just didn't get it. it. It confused me. Um I feel bad that they deleted the comment. That wasn't my intention. I simply wanted to get a better understanding of like did did I miss something? Did you miss something? Like what what happened there? But anyways, uh a couple of the other comments I saw were things about like questioning, you know, whether it's enough buffs or whatever. Uh the one thing I will say is that I did do a lot of testing. I'm not exaggerating when I say that, guys. I got on to record around seven o'clock. Uh, my plan was to record before I went live for the shard pull. And I was troubleshooting that for hours, right up until the point where I had to go live. So um, eventually we figured it out on stream. You can go watch that. It's on my VOD. And ultimately, whether or not Strengthen was just an additional buff or damage reduction it works but it really felt like it was more about being an additional buff because i understand strength and reduces damage especially early on and that would make the shields getting bigger but because the shields are directly proportional to the number of buffs being extended it's just a little bit more logical when you read the ability to say Okay, yeah, but we we brought the these extra buffs and it made it made a difference, um, because yeah, strength and reduces the damage taken, but I don't know that it would do enough. I mean, the amount of damage that needed to be done to break this shield off of people, which is what was happening. That's how it was failing. I don't know that a strengthen would have built the shield up enough on its own so it had to have been something else where the shield was getting bigger i feel like that's what it felt like when i was tinkering with the mechanics of the team as i, as I was trying different champions and and doing different things it really felt like that was the difference was the number of buffs but you know it is what it is either way the team works it's affinity friendly we did it did work on spirit affinity like i said so i'm thrilled about that team and I've had an opportunity to test that in some... Oh, I can't show you guys. Okay, so Iron Twins, because I did it and I'm recording after reset. On Void Affinity, I went all the way down to stage 14 on Iron Twins. 
Uh, speaking of, let me just check my missions real quick, because on Marius missions, I do need to do hard mode dragon. Okay. Um, yeah, that team, the exact team. In fact, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did on the Spirit Affinity one here. I went in here, and I just went to team setup, and I used my... This is new team eight. This is my clan boss team. You'll see all of the stuff is for round one, and um, it works great. Now... A couple of things I want to say about this team, because I know you guys are going to let me know in the comments. This boss got nerfed. So it's as simple as saying that this team is only good now because the boss got nerfed. Totally agree with that. Doesn't It's irrelevant, because the fact of the matter is, if you build a team similar to mine, theoretically, you will have the same amount of progression in uh, Iron Twins as... I'm having with this same team so uh just because the boss is easier it does you know it the team works on an easier boss cool great there's probably a better team that I could do in here for this boss maybe maybe just take out the Ursula altogether and bring in Newt to speed it up a little bit um you know there's there's quite a few different things that I could potentially do but the team works here it kind of goes against my my usual Iron Twins team. And what I mean by that is they actually are doing War Masters and stuff on their turn, which is going to activate his counterattack mechanic. We just don't care. Now, this is a bad example. This is a very easy difficulty. But I was able to get all the way to the second to last difficulty. And honestly, this is not a... Like, there are better teams. I'm this, this video is not about building a team to progress Iron Twins. Now that Iron Twins is a little bit easier, if you do the mechanics, meaning you bring someone with a decreased speed on a regular interval, um, you will probably have a very high amount of luck. Or, sorry, have... Uh, uh, not luck. You'll probably be able to build a traditional team that uses decreased speed to keep his turn meter a little bit more in check and you'll be good to go because I, I, if i'm not mistaken when he's under decreased speed he won't uh gain yeah uh so he gets turn meter by 10 percent whenever you buff your team so like immediately when i buff my team with this team he's getting uh turn meter but that do that doesn't happen when decreased speed is on the boss so if i was to bring a decreased speed champion uh, I would probably have better luck with this team, with this team, or a or a completely different team, uh, provided that uh, you know we 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 do the mechanics of the fight, which is decrease speed. This team doesn't have that. Doesn't matter. I don't care. My main purpose was a very lazy approach to this boss. Come in here, take the same clan boss team, put it in here, click run, and. It got me on Void Affinity. It got me all the way to the second to last stage, which is huge for this account. Um, I don't really want to watch this. I don't know why I ran it. So we're going to we'll quit, quit this one. I do know that we would be able to succeed here. It probably would have been quick enough, but I, I hate vamping when you got, you know, because I accidentally clicked the video. This is all the proof to say I got all those extra souls. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, I got all those extra souls, and we were able to uh, be. And I sorry, I got all these extra souls because I progressed way further in Iron Twins than I ever have. Like I said, boss got nerfed. Team works. It is what it is. I could fine tune that team later. The final thing that I want to talk about in today's video is where do we go from here? I've been talking clan boss for two hundred and seventy. I don't even know what's that six 279 days i've been talking about clan boss clan boss clan boss clan boss we did it it's solved until there's a nerf i pray there isn't clan boss is fixed now what well previously i said that i would progress in doom in uh hydra clan boss and you all went crazy on me and told me doom tower doom tower doom tower doom tower i totally get that this is as far as i can progress possibly for this rotation um 
to progress any further, I I need to I think I need to six star my Lady Annabelle. I probably could find a way to make it work with what she has now, but it will be much easier if I can just simply level her up and increase that at that HP level to an even stronger level to compete with this boss easier. Okay. Um, as far as the waves go, I have felt pretty good about them, but I feel even better about them now with Wixwell because I can put intercept on my Armands for any Tormund waves, which were the only waves that gave me any real trouble. Armands being Armands was able to control any wave that I ever encountered in this game. The only thing I, other thing I need is a way to keep him from getting frozen. So Wixwell does that for me. And then that keeps his cooldown up and we can kill everything on the wave just by crowd controlling it. So the double torment was a problem, but Wixwell helps me with that. Obviously a block debuffs is better than Wixwell, but Wixwell has it. Or Wixwell has uh, Intercept, which I can use instead. So, because I don't have block debuffs on my team. So, that would be the plan. Uh, I don't have, I'm sorry, I don't have my black debuffs leveled right now. So, that would be the plan um, to move past the waves that stopped me before. So, I feel comfortable in Doom Tower, is what I'm saying. I probably, like, here's my thing if I level up Lady Annabelle today, which I would not happen, but if I did, I would have one week and two days left to progress a little bit further through Doom Tower Hard. Which, okay, let's just count the days here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a week. And it would probably take me two, three, four days to level up anyways. I don't have any five-star food right now. So if I was to do that, I get use out of her, her for a one, it, one week, two days, and then I don't touch her again until I see Bommel again. I know he's in other rotations. If he's in the next rotation... I'm dumb, whatever, but I don't, I think it's better to build somebody that might be helpful on a larger scale, or let me rephrase that, not a larger scale, somebody that's going to help me every single week moving forward. If we look at my roster as a whole, Wixwell covers a lot for Hydra. We have our Provoke, we have... A big shield. We have increased defense. We have intercept. We have buff extension and decrease attack on an AOE hit. This is pretty good kit for Hydra, especially the A1 provoke. I feel like we would be able, we would get a lot of opportunities to use this in Hydra. What else do we need? Well, we need. Hex. Don't really have a champion for Hex at the moment. That's leveled. I do have Mithrala, who I need to level, but she's not currently leveled or booked. So this is a five, a whopping five turn cooldown. That is far too big of a cooldown. But she does bring a cleanse. Uh, I would have to level her. So Hex is a bit of a problem, right? But then we also lack any way on this account to deal with fears. Now, the hex may be a problem. Um, I can probably handle that. I can probably work around that. It's not ideal, but I have Geomancer who I could probably use to kind of manip to, to, to get the head of, I think, Torment, whichever, whichever head needs to be hexed to hit. Well, if I put uh, Geomancer's HP burn on that champion, or on that head, um, any damage we take would then go to that head. So uh, I feel confident using that as a potential there. So we have Provoke figured out, right? We have uh, kind of a workaround. I, I know Cursed Set is an option. I don't really have any all AoE hitters at the moment to to really use cursed set consistently 
Um, nor do I have any champion in this roster that I feel like would be worthy of a cursed set. Maybe an argument for Soul Bond, but doesn't bring anything else to Hydra. So we could maybe we could be okay ignoring Hex until I level Mithrala. But the fear. How do we deal with the fear? That's going to be a bit of a problem. That's where Shamil comes in. Shamil's already booked up because he's a great champion. I knew I'd use him someday, so during Cran B Clans, I would book him. Uh, no masteries, of course, but he does need to be leveled and geared. He would be ready to go as soon as he's leveled. Other options for leveling for Hydra in particular. Uh, Bambus is an option. Mithral is an option. Razzlevarg's even an option. Bambus is a really decent option, especially if I put him in a hex set because he's all AoE hits. This one does AoE if they're under two debuffs. And he brings decreased speed on an A1, which people sleep on that part of his kit. I, I joke a lot. I wasn't happy when I first pulled him, and I joke a lot that I think he's uh, not great, but I mostly do that to annoy one of my viewers' cheap vodka. So, <laughs> um, Bambus would be an option. He would be great in a cursed set with the AoE, so that would give me my Hex. So he's an option that I could level up and build. Um, but I think Shamil would be the better option. I also eventually need to make an Ugo. But I do have a leveled up and, and quite useful Sun Wukong. So I'm kind of okay just using Sun Wukong in the short term until I get to a point where leveling up is a little bit easier than, than kind of what it currently is. So um, that's where I think I should focus. I'm thinking Hydra. I think I build Shamil. And then we do Lady. Or we did Lady. Then we do Mithrala after. A couple of reasons why I don't want to do Mithrala right now. Is Mithrala the better champion? Absolutely. I view Mithrala as being one of the best champions, one of the best champions in the game, okay? Uh, Hex is extremely valuable. Her interaction with Hex is extremely valuable. She has a full cleanse with a strengthen and a shield, and then poisons on the A1 with a defensive-based kit, meaning that she can take a hit, um really really good kit i love this champion however legendary books are few and far between even with the consistency at which you i'm able to farm clan boss legendary books are hard to get plain and simple so she's not book heavy which i also love about her four books is the minimum i need to get her 100% viable, right? Uh, and even even two books, get, getting those to a four turn is reasonable. But I would prefer them at a three turn cooldown. So my, theory, my thought process basically is build Shamil first, get those books over a bit of time, and then I'll be ready to book Mithrala. I still have one book left to put into Wixwell. Um... Because, unfortunately, I didn't get lucky. I, I do want to bring this down to a three-turn cooldown. Especially if I'll be using him in Clan Boss. Because I'll get that Intercept out there more often. Um, so, that's my thought process. I figure we'll go Shamil, then Mithrala. And that will help me progress in Hydra. Like I said, I feel confident in Doom Tower hard. I really do. Uh, and then by the time the rotation comes back around to where I need Lady Annabelle to get past Bommel, well, then I'll be ready to level her up and we'll go from there. So that's my theory. I think it's better, like, if I le level up Lady Annabelle, it's a little short-sighted, where the other ones are long plays that'll, that'll help me every week moving forward. So that's kind of the thought. Um, Bambus is a definite option, though, that, that, that will be heavily considered. Truly, truly will. I know I... I make fun of him and, 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 and stuff, but all AOE hits with decreased speed on an A1. Uh, granted, it is uh, 
Oh, the it's a uh, so 45 55% chance. I didn't realize that it goes down to a 40% chance for decreased speed, but still that's an A1. If I ever get Lady Mikage or I level up any of my ally attackers, which is the one <laughs> of Krila, um, then I have some really high quality hex landing and decreased speed landing. So uh, two very important parts of any kit. He does have a weird interaction with, with Wixwell, though. But All right, Well, I've been talking long enough. Um, thank you guys so much for the support and the comments. That video for Wixwell did way better than I had actually expected it to do. I thought it might be a good video, but it did better than I had ever imagined. So thank you guys so much for that support. Uh, comments, all the algorithmic things that you do to help me out on a regular basis. One last thing, one last thing before I end the video. Somebody in my Discord just today, a few hours ago, asked me about account takeovers. I've kind of been quiet about account takeovers. I will do those for members. I just haven't figured out a day to do it. What if we do, let's do Tuesday. Let's do Takeover Tuesday. If you want an account takeover, I will do them on Tuesday. So every other Tuesday, so basically every Tuesday that's not Clan v Clan, I will do account takeovers. If I don't have account takeovers to do, then on stream, then I'll do something else. Um, so Takeover Tuesday. Here's my streaming schedule on Tuesdays. I will definitely stream from 9 a.m. Eastern time until noon Eastern time, but people work. That's not ideal for everyone's schedule. It's great for Europeans, but not great for other Americans um, like myself. If necessary, I can stream as early as 10 p.m. Eastern time until around midnight Eastern time. Uh, I can push that if I need to, to 9.30 Eastern time, but normally 10 Eastern time gives me a little bit more time to say goodnight to my kids and then recalibrate, you know, decompress a little bit before I go right into to streaming. I won't stream every night at 10 Eastern time, but I'm available to stream at 10 Eastern time. So, uh, so if, if an account takeover wants to happen on Tuesday night, I will happily do that. Um, if you become a member and you don't want an account takeover to be streamed and you just want me some private time where I, you know, chat with you in a discord and I share my screen with you in discord or something, uh, we can absolutely set that up. But I like to stream it because that generates a lot of traffic and maybe even make a video about it, which can really help other people who might be making similar mistakes or could, or maybe I learned something from your account. I've had that happen plenty of times. So I love, I just, every, this is all about learning. It's all about growing as Raid Shadow Legends players. So uh, the last thing I'll say about that is to become a member on my channel. It's a join button. So I have two memberships. Either membership works. One of them is the same price as what a Twitch subscription was because i think they just upped their prices and then i put a lower value there too uh so either one of those you can be one of those i'll do account takeovers for you it's also a great way to support my channel kind of not directly i suppose because you know i only get a portion of it but it does support my channel um financially which is something that if you're you know looking to help me be able to create more content that's the best way to do it because you know this is an experiment over the summer where i'm going to be more active and, and creating more high quality content like a wixwell video that i felt was very well explained um and you know basically i'm trying not to, to uh, 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 blah, blah, blah. but yeah if you're willing to do that i would super appreciate it no pressure please you know i i, I get it um, I've been there. It's not always a, something that you're willing to spend money on. So I, I get that. But for the, uh, account takeovers, that's all I ask for is a membership. It's relatively cheap compared to some other content creators. I feel like, uh, but that I just want to build up my channel. That's what I'm trying to do. Memberships help. So, all right. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for all of the support. Please consider subscribing. I know I talk quite a bit about memberships here, but subscriptions is another way to really support the channel. That doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is click a button 
Uh, that's going to help me directly grow my channel so that I can continue putting out more content. All right, guys. I will see you all in the next video.